So in order to make this work, the, the key thing was figuring out which parts to use when. I obviously couldn't have everything going all the time. It was just be a big sort of jumbled mess. So the, the trick first was to figure out the foundational part, which we kind of had already determined as the basic strum part. And then all the finger style stuff, as well as the lead stuff, you know, kind of came and, and went based upon, you know, where it would fit in the track and how everything could kind of gel together. So, you know, there was a combination of techniques used. Obviously, one was trimming out what didn't work and leaving what did. And then compression, either to sort of bring out the rhythmic elements of, of the piece or to simply just control the dynamics and make things sit better with all the other parts going on. Obviously, EQ to um, alter and, and change sound so some things might be brighter, maybe pull some frequencies out of one part so that, you know, and put them into another part so that those things wouldn't take up the same frequency spectrum. Um, and then space, you know, making sure everything sort of sounded like it was in the same or similar space using reverbs and delays. I ended up putting the main acoustic guitar track just through this Vertigo compressor just to uh, sort of level it out, emphasize some more of the attack and the decay of the, the percussive nature of the guitar, and sort of enhance the, the rhythmic element that's going on in it. So um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and play a little bit of it, and then we can you know, hear what it sounds like with the compressor and without the compressor. Okay, so for the finger style section of this, um, I wanted to just brighten it up, add a lot of kind of like sparkly high end to it so that, um, so it would kind of stand out in the mix and not get buried in with all the other guitar stuff that was going on. Um, so, you know, I cut out a fair amount of lows and it ended up adding quite a bit of top end to it, more than I would kind of tend to do in anything solo or, or something like that. So, um, you know, I ended up using the Charter OP EQ. Um, and as you can see, it's got this 50K boost, which is you know, substantially higher than what we hear, but um, it sort of runs back down into those frequencies we do, and it adds a really nice sort of shimmery top end to everything. So that's, that's what you're hearing on that track. As far as this, you know, putting it into a, a particular space, you know, I ended up choosing the um, Bercasti Sunset Chamber and put pretty much every guitar in that space. And you know, it's a 20 millisecond pre-delay, which uh, gives a little bit of space between the actual attack of the instrument and when you actually hear the reverb. The other sort of space I added was a mono delay. The guitar part panned to the left and the delay panned to the right, uh, giving it, you know, just a little, a different sort of space than everything else. Um, just because I felt like that part was, a, you know, a little different and I thought that the, the delay could bring out sort of the percussive nature of that track. The tempo is matched as close as, you know, to get it um, to the track. Some feedback, low end cut a little bit, high end cut a little bit. Um, essentially a quarter note triplet feel. Mm -hmm. 